accept to something big coming up on your screen. Just settle back and relax, cause you're gonna get a whole lot of singing, a whole lot of laughing, a whole lot of loving from me. Pretty good tonight, but I think I think Jeannie is a little mad at me. Last night I told her I wanted to eat out, and she left a sandwich on the lawn. <laughs> I think she's mad because the, the night before I went to a surprise party at Phil Harris's house, it was a real surprise for Phil too. He didn't know he was there. <laughs> Everybody was at the party, and such beautiful women. Whew, Elizabeth Taylor was. There, she sent a waiter over to ask me for a dance. And you know something? He wasn't a bad dancer for a waiter. <laughs> then I had a little trouble driving home. Some wise guy at the party must have filled my gas tank with vodka. And I couldn't get the car in any gear but high. <laughs> Here in the moonlight There's something sweet love I want to say Your honey boy I'm waiting The ruby lips to greet Don't be so aggravated Blushing rosy, my rosy sweet. Rosy, rosy, you are my posy. You are my posy. You are, you are my heart bouquet. My heart's bouquet. Come out here in the moonlight. There's a man sweet love. Say, oh, honey boy, I'm weird. Oh, holy lips to me. Don't be so aggravated. My blood is rooted. My food is sweet. Of his voice, there'd be a halo around it. <laughs> How can I tell you the good news? President Johnson just announced he's going to make Jackie Gleason a national park. <laughs> See, and President Johnson had a news conference at his ranch down in Texas. Boy, he sure loves Texas, and you know, he's right. Because I was thinking, if it wasn't for Texas, the Gulf of Mexico would leak all over Arizona. <laughs> You, honey. Oh, darling, I love you, too. Oh. <laughs> I love you, darling. I love you. <laughs> I love you, darling. Oh, not as much as I love you. No, I love you more than you love me. Oh, you good, darling. <laughs> the words can't say how much. <laughs> Darling, try. Okay, I'll try. You're an angel sent to me from heaven. I've never loved anyone till I loved you, but I'm not really worthy of your love. You're a princess. Kiss me. A goddess of love, kiss me. And 
I can only say you're the dearest, most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Oh, mm. darling, remember, remember the first night we met? Where was that? That little sidewalk cafe with the wonderful violinist. He played our song all evening. Oh, how I'd love to hear it again right now. Let's put the record on. Okay, the record. Hmm. again. <laughs> May I help you, sir? Yes. I wonder if you have a copy of a book called How to Fix a Flat. <laughs> uh, yes, I... Let me check that for you. I think we do right here in the automotive. Ah, yes. Here we are. How to Fix a Flat. By Marvin Goodwrench. No, 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 no. I wanted How to Fix a Flat by Mr. Laddie. I see. <laughs> I see what you mean, a flat. Are you decorating an English apartment? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all, all right. right. Bye-bye. We're closing up now. Up. I, uh... Yes. I wonder if you have Hollywood Wives by Jackie Collins. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes. That's a very spicy book. We have that right here. Hollywood Wives. Oh, that's so sexy. We have to keep that in the spice rack. <laughs> here we are. Hollywood Wives by Jackie Collins. No, 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 no. I want it. Hollywood Wives by Jack Edward Collins. Oh. Jackie Collins. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No. no. It's all right. We don't have that. That's the problem. Right. Can you help me with David Copperfield? David Copperfield. Yes. Yes. That's Dickens. No. 
What? No, that's uh, Carter Wells. No, I think you'll find that Dickens wrote David Copperfield. No, 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 no. Charles Dickens wrote David Copperfield. <laughs> with two P's. <laughs> this is David Copperfield by Carter Wells with one P. No, I'm sorry. We, we, we don't have that. Would you mind looking through your David Copperfields and not your David Copperfields? <laughs> Copperfield. All our David Copperfields with two P's are by Charles Dickens. Do you have a copy of Great Expectations? Yes, definitely. That's G-R-A-T-E, Expectations. Also by Carter Wells. Nothing by Carter Wells. <laughs> you have a copy of A Christmas Carol with a Q. <laughs> Nothing was Carter Wells. <laughs> Definitely not. So sorry to bother you. Not at all. Do you have Olsen's standard book of American birds? Yes. <laughs> O-L-S-E-N? Yes. B-I-R-D-S? Yes. <laughs> the expurgated version, of course. The what? The expurgated version of Olsen's standard book of American birds. The ones without the, <clears throat> the wood finches. They all have wood finches. The wood finches are standard American bird. Well, I don't like them. Those nasty long beaks. You don't like the wood finch? No. <laughs> Anything else? I don't like blue jays. Blue jays! And another one. Oh, here's another little one. All right. Anything else? Buy it. I can't. Why not? It's torn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's a bookstore. What do you want? Anything you want, it's a bookstore. Ask me. Do you have Shasha Gabor's new book? Who's next? Or remember the alimony? Yes. Here it is. Now buy it. I don't have any money. It doesn't matter. I'll take a check. I don't have my checkbook. I'll buy it for you. Here. Eleven dollars. Go ahead, take it. I can't read. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Come on. Once upon a time, there were three Hungarian sisters, and each one was younger than the other one, and the youngest was the mother. Do you have a Twinkie? A Twinkie? Dean is a performer. Dean is not a singer. Dean is not a comedian. Dean is a performer. He can do everything. He can do everything. He's, uh, he's like Willie Mays. He can field and he can hit with power. Dean can work films and be successful, which he did. He worked uh, theaters with Jerry. He worked nightclubs alone. His recordings go on and on forever. His television show is history, which is what we're here to talk about right now. Sinatra is the greatest singer that I've ever been around, bar none. No question. But Dean is a major performer. Dean can do everything. How about that, Ken? You old timer, you. You know, Ken's a wonderful guy, and he lives a quiet life. And I mean a real quiet life. Yeah, his idea of a good time is to sneak into the Hollywood Wax Museum and kiss Edna May Oliver goodnight. <laughs> Sincerely. Supper time and the liver is greasy. Here, put me on. 
<laughs> Our love affair is a wondrous thing Because my wife don't suspect the thing <laughs> Well, we're going to sing a song now. I'm going to go to the couch. Where's the rest of my leg? Oh. All righty. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Third floor, ladies' lingerie. All sizes. Small, medium, and bubble, bubble. A lot of people are asking, <clears throat> excuse me, where, where are the new comedians coming from? Well, I don't know, but here's one who just came from his dressing room. <laughs> and he's one very funny man, Mr. Flip Wilson. Everyone has idols, right? People who inspire them and drive them on to new horizons. My idol, of all the giants of American history, my idol is Christopher Columbus. And it's not because he was Italian. I just like Columbus. I think that was a tremendous thing Columbus did, discovering America. I mean, when he was a kid, he had a big problem. Like, his parents were leaving there in the yard to play. And the neighbors would come by, they'd lean over the fence, they'd tease him. They'd say things like, Christopher Columbus, what are you going to do when you grow up? And he'd say, I'm going to discover America. I told him, you better cut that out. You know there isn't any America. You know the world is square. Chris would say they sure are. 35, when he'd gotten out of grammar school, he arranged an audience with the Queen. Queen Isabel. Isabel Johnson. What's the Queen's name? Don't she ask him about this America project? And Chris tells him, if I don't discover America, there won't be a Benjamin Franklin. Or a Star Spangled Banner, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and no Ray Charles. When the Queen heard no Ray Charles, she panicked. The Queen said, Ray Charles! You gonna find Ray Charles? Is he in America? And Chris said, Sure, that's where all those records come from. All the Queen's running through the halls of the castle screaming, Chris gonna find Ray Charles, honey. He's going to America on that boat. What you said? Chris gonna go find Ray Charles. She wrote him out a traveler's check. Chris ran the local Army Navy store. He bought three used ships, two pair of potatoes, some shades. Then he got his other supplies. He got three chicken sandwiches, two cans of Vienna sausage, five cases of scotch, and a small soda. He's ready to leave. The photographers and reporters are at the pier to see him off. All the girls are there, they're all excited and screaming. Goodbye, Columbus. <laughs> he gone on that boat, honey. <laughs> he gone to America. Isabel was there and she'd had a few. <laughs> Isabel saying, Chris gonna find Ray Charles. <laughs> I said, knock it off, Isabel. Will you be cool? <laughs> they turned to the first mate. He said, Way anchor. About 10 minutes later, the guy said, 7,482 miles. <laughs> he said, put the anchor in the boat. Okay? Let's put it in the boat. You guys don't even know how to weigh the anchor. They had gotten out of the harbor, but the first mate asked, Chris, which way is America? Chris said, I don't know. He said, oh, we're going to have to sail around or we bump into it. Said, we better go this way. If we go that way, we'll sail off the edge like them other guys. <laughs> hundred days later, the men are ready to mutiny. Chris has been goofing. He's been going through a bit like, back up, make a right, watch out for the edge. First mate says, come here, Chris. Chris, the men are ready to mutiny. Cabin boy said, if you don't find America in two days, he's gonna give you a shot in the mouth. Right then, a piece of wood floats by the ship. Chris said, there's a piece of wood. So we're not far from America. That's American wood. And I know American wood when I see it. First mate said, why don't you cut that out? That's a piece of the ship they're breaking up. <laughs> right then, the guy in the mast shells, land ho! Chris said, what does that mean? <laughs> so that means he sees land. Chris said, well, pull over. <laughs> so that's America. You guys are going to pass right by. You don't even know America when you see it. He said, that is America. 
waters. Look at all those spacious skies. Those amber waves of green. <laughs> Dig that purple mountain's majesty. I bet there's fruit out there on the plain. <laughs> Big holiday in America that day. Big holiday called not having been discovered yet day. All the Indians on the beach there celebrating. They got sandwiches, six packs, three or four bags of whatever it is they're putting in the pipe. Chris leans over the side of the ship, he says, hey, yo! Yo! Where is this? Fine little Indian broad standing on the beach said, why? What's your name? Where you want to come around here and have ships? I said, my name's Christopher Columbus. I'm out discovering. So I'm going to discover America. I'm going to discover y'all. Little Indian broad said, we don't want to be discovered. You can't discover nobody if they don't want to be discovered. You better discover yourself away from here. First mate said, Chris, they're hostile. Chris said, yeah, and they mad too. <laughs> said, but we're going in there anyway. That's America. They can't keep us out of there. Let down a longboat. And they let down the longboat. And they're heading into the shore. And the Indians are throwing rocks and spears and flaming arrows. And they're yelling a lot of things about Chris's mother. <laughs> first mate said, first mate said, Chris, we better not go in there. Those Indians are crazy. Chris said, turn the boat around. We'll leave. We'll make a map and give it to the pilgrims. Pilgrims will fix them. As they turn the sail away, the little Indian girl says, Goodbye, Columbus, you devil, you. <laughs> yeah, fine. That's Mr. Flip Wilson. You devil, you. I just want you to know that you can come back on this show and make us laugh anytime you want. You know that? Thank you very much. It's all right. <laughs> Hey, Gene. Yeah. There's an article in this magazine you might be interested in. It's yeah. by, yeah, by a lady from the Women's Liberation Movement. She says that men use dancing as an excuse to treat women as sex objects. Well, she may have a point there, Dean. I've, I've seen the way some guys carry on when they're dancing, and, you know, they think they can do anything they like to a girl as, uh, as long as they do it in tempo, you know? <laughs> But you know, this article says that women ought to refuse to dance with men from now on. Now, wouldn't that be terrible? Why? Men don't need women to dance with. We don't? No. We could dance with anything, we're even inanimate objects. Oh, you mean married women? <laughs> no. No, Dean. I mean simple, everyday objects. Come over here, I'll show you. See, here we got a lot of things in here. Say, we're in luck, Dean. A lot of them seem to have come stag. You mean you're actually gonna dance with these things? Not without asking. Oh. May I have the pleasure? Jean, see if she's got a squeegee for me. Oh, don't worry, Dean. We'll find you a partner. Oh, all right. Find me a partner? Yeah. Hey, we'll find... Hey, what about this bathtub? No. It's married. How can you tell she's married? It has a ring around it. Got a ring around it. It's not bad dancer. I just wish it would keep its trap shut. Oh, yeah. What's that? Well, when they're going to the powder room. Oh, why can't they ever go alone? <laughs> Pardon me, miss, but I've never done this with a real live girl. Hey, we set this one out. <laughs> I bet you're glad to get out of the house. Ah. <laughs> hey, baby, 
We could make beautiful music together. You're too late. She's got a kid. Got a kid. <laughs> hey. It just dawned on me. What? No wonder you're so good at this. You've had a lot of experience dancing with inanimate objects. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Here, be my guest. Singing in the rain What a glorious feeling I'm happy again Laughing at clouds Dark clouds above The sun's in my heart And I'm ready for Come on with the rain, have a smile on my face. I'm dancing. And singing in the rain. I'm sure those of us who have been exposed to the talents of Jonathan Winters will agree that he is an unchallenged master of improvisation. We thought an old attic might be fun, so we'll turn him loose, and I guarantee you, he'll turn you on. Can you make your way through here? Yeah. Many of you have asked, you know, on this tour, what the sacred bird is like. <laughs> well, the cat ate it. Isn't that a shame? It used to be on here on this little perch. But as I told you, the cat ate it. <laughs> That's the way kitty goes. <laughs> On guard. So you're the Count de Fortfar. I'd recognize you anywhere. You know, it's a strange thing. But I intend to kill you. You've been the Count too long. Several years ago, I remember you as the Countess. <laughs> now you're back to being the Count. You're all fouled up. And I shall have to kill you, because I am to be the rightful heir to the throne. Are you ready? Hmm? Don't take advantage of me. I'm nearsighted in the one eye. He's down in the moat. Just to make sure. <coughs> I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Jones. You come in here for a checkup, right? Well, you really let yourself go this time. Yeah, boy. You're down to nothing now. What's that? Listen to your heart. What are you talking about? Here, you listen to it. I'll play loud in case you want to say anything. But... <laughs> oh, my wife and I went on an ocean cruise. Three days out and I was sick down to my shoes. And to make it more forlorn, we sailed into a raging storm. 
Hit a sandbar and got stuck right in the ooze Where were you when the ship hit the sand? I sat out out there praying for dry land With my water wings held tightly in my hand Where were you when the ship hit the sand? You wanted a folk song? Uh, yeah! Go ahead! You got the whole family in there! <laughs> Oh, the captain, he came running up on deck. Yeah. He was looking kind of pale around the neck. As he stood there shouting orders, I stood splashing in the waters, and I asked exactly what you might expect, Ready? Where were you when the ship hit the sand? He said, I was out there praying for it. Oh, I you got it, baby. With my water wings held tightly in my hand. Where were you when the ship hit the sand? One more time. Where were you when the ship hit the sand? He said I was out there praying for dry land With my water wings held tightly in my hand Where were you in the ship in the sand? Tennessee Ernie Boy! Beautiful! Yeah! Thank you very much. Now, now for my opening song. I got so many hits, I don't know which one to sing. Before I do, I must tell you that I'm dressing next door to the chorus girls. And the wall between our dressing room has a little, a little peephole. I had it plugged up. <laughs> then I unplugged it, let them enjoy themselves. <laughs> For me, it's too drafty. You know, I can't talk unless I smoke. Seeing me without a cigar is like seeing Phyllis Diller on the middle page of Playboy. <laughs> At my age, it's exciting. <laughs> my age, seeing a blank page is exciting. <laughs> Everybody wants to know what I smoke. I smoke a domestic cigar. It costs 25 cents. I love it. It fits my whole head. You know that Milton Berle pays $2 for his cigars? If I pay $2 for a cigar, first I dance with it. <laughs> close. <laughs> well, my opening song. Uh, Augusta, J Augusta J. McCann was a hemp married man. He has been fighting with his wife since married life began. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I always open with a song. Well, Dean Martin opens with a song, and Robert Goulet opens with a song, Harry Belafonte, Judy Garland. All us great singers open the same. <laughs> and we all have our own styles. Dean Martin takes a few drinks while he's singing, and Robert Goulet always goes for those top notes, and Harry Belafonte opens a shirt down the air, and Judy sits on the floor and sings over the rainbow. <laughs> One night, I tried all their four styles at once. I took a few drinks, and I went for the high note, and I opened my shirt and sat on the floor, and what do you think happened? I hiccup, missed the top note, caught cold, and couldn't get up. <laughs> I was helping the woman across the street move in. She's marvelous. She's sophisticated. She's charming. She's lived in Paris and Rome. She speaks French. She's a member of the Jet Set. Oh, she's a member of the Jet Set? What's she doing in Burbank? Maybe the president froze her assets. <laughs> she can't find a bed in 
neighborhood to live in. Well, whoever she is, she sure made a hit with Kenny. Oh, that's true. I haven't seen Kenny look like that since he walked into the bathroom and found Aunt Agatha in the shower. <laughs> hey, Freddie, when we first met, how come you never looked at me like that? I never saw you in the shower. I'm worried. I'm very worried. It's not like Kenny to become enameled over another woman. <laughs> a mother that's enamored. Don't teach me English. Teach me French so I can go over there and tell that woman to let my Kenny alone. Mrs. Lane, it's probably not serious. Oh, yes? When you met your wife, did you help her move, huh? More times than you know. But she kept coming back. <laughs> Mother, this new woman across the street is probably very nice. Don't bother, Mrs. Lane. I'll get it. Hello. I'm Jeanette Nolan, your new neighbor. Oh, that's marvelous. What do you drink? Fred! Uh, I mean, come in, come in. Thank you. Now, don't tell me. You must be Freddy. And you're Vicky. And you're Mr. Kapopoulos. And, of course, you're Mrs. Lane. Kenny's told me all about you. He has. Well, why, why, why don't you sit down, please, Mrs. Nolan? Thank you. Sit someplace. I. Oh, no, not there. That's for company. <laughs> it, it is Mrs. Nolan. Well, yes. Didn't Kenny tell you I'm divorced? Oh, yeah? What do you drink? Freddie! Divorced? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, that's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, Mrs. Nolan, I don't mean to impose. Oh, impose, I... impose. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I was just giving a little housewarming tonight, and I thought maybe I could come by here and borrow a little ice. Oh, I'll get it for you. What should I put it in? You insist you can put it in a scotch and soda. I'll get the scotch. I know where she keeps the good stuff. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I saw her first. I'll get the lady a drink. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Aren't they adorable? And you're Kenny. He's so sweet. Helping me move in and all. Uh, but, um, you know, the odd coincidence is that Kenny was the name of my second husband. Oh, you had two husbands. No, 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 no. Six. <laughs> uh, the Colonel, Ken, Georges, Jacques and Claude. That's only five. You left out one. Now, I married the colonel twice. I'd forgotten I married him the first time. You must have a drip dry wedding gown with those. No, no, Mrs. Lane. At my first two weddings, I wore a very simple, lovely white bridal gown. At my third, I wore a suit, and after that, it was just come as you are. <laughs> Something I think you ought to know. Uh, you see, uh, Freddie and I plan to be married very soon. Uh -huh. oh, it won't be a fancy wedding. Uh, with Freddie, I just want something simple. Well, with Freddie, I think you've got it. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Nolan, yes. uh, this is a family neighborhood, and you being a member of the Jet Set, I think you'll find it very dull here. You'll be the only home wrecker around. <laughs> Mrs. Lane, I, I, I do think there's something you really ought to know. Here we are. You see, I put... A nice, cool drink for the lady. Well, thank you so much. Here's a better cool drink thank for you. the lady. <laughs> oh, this is ever so nice. But with all these drinks, where in the world am I going to put them? Oh, have I got a spot picked out. <laughs> uh, Freddie, a mother and I would like a little wine. Oh, well, then you're very lucky. I just saw some in the refrigerator. Help yourself. Oh, now, come on, fellas. I hate to drink alone, so oh, why doesn't... Great. <laughs> we'll join you. To our terrific new neighbor. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. I think I really better be getting off. But uh, if you haven't forgotten, would it be at all possible if I could borrow the ice? Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get the ice. 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 I'll get the ice.
boy, do I ever know her type. You know, she's gonna make a play for every man in the neighborhood. Now, the only chance we have of saving them is to find her another man. But, Vicky, where are we gonna find a man who drinks like she does, who plays around like she does? Where are we gonna find a man that depraved? <laughs> There's a woman in my kitchen. She's just like you are. Then I can tell you right now, she's got all the wrong parts. <laughs> no, Mr. Martin, you don't understand. You see, we have a loose woman in our kitchen. Good, I'll take her out tonight and get her tight. No. That's exactly what we want you to do. The woman in the kitchen, she's new in the neighborhood, and to put it delicately, she's a barracuda. <laughs> Number one, she drinks. Number two, she swings. And number three, she's a home wrecker. I'll take number two. Oh, no. hey, stop making jokes. If you just put on the charm, you'll take uh, all her attention from the other. She'll concentrate on you. Oh, you want me to be suave? If you don't, we'll lose Freddie. We'll lose Mr. Kapopoulos. We'll even lose Kenny. Yeah, you sure got three great losers there. <laughs> That's wonderful. I knew I could depend on you to be rotten. Everything. Everything, Mrs. Lane, and especially the ice. Where is Mr. Kapopoulos and Freddy? Well, they're in the kitchen. They're making some more ice. Oh, well, what's taking them so long? I think Mr. Kapopoulos is looking up the recipe. <laughs> well, I suppose you three want to be alone. I'll just go see what's keeping the fellas. Does this one talk, or is he a stand-in? No, Mrs. Nolan, this is the irresistible Dean Martin. Oh, I wouldn't say I was irresistible. Well, then don't. <laughs> well, lovely lady, maybe you saw me in the airport. No, I doubt that. I never hang around the luggage rack. <laughs> uh, you know, beautiful, a lot of people compare my romantic style to uh, Sinatra. Junior or senior? Oops, I think this here is going to be a tough one. What would you say uh, to a little Japanese restaurant where we can have teriyaki, romaki, and sake? Oh, no, forget it. Those are my gardeners. Oh, my. <laughs> I know a nice little French restaurant where we can dine in a nice little booth. Good. We can eat and use the phone at the same time. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. I really do think you are quite charming, but would you excuse me? I really must be yeah, getting home. Would you rather wait until a stool opens at the taco stand? <laughs> no, I at, least, at least let him walk you home with all those muggers and home wreckers. Uh, look, Mrs. Lay, that's the second time you've called me a home wrecker tonight. And I want you to know something. I'm getting married again. Who are you marrying? Who's number seven? The one man I've been seeing on and off all these years. Who's that? The clerk at the marriage license bureau. <laughs> I'm so relieved Kenny didn't get involved with that woman. After six months, he would have been at her throat. Yeah, that's Kenny's problem. He would have been at her throat. He still doesn't know where the good stuff is.
I was a stamp man. I'm sure glad. I'm real glad we finally got you off that Ponderosa and on my show. Well, I'll tell you, Dean, I've been wanting to do your show for a long time, but I hated to leave my boys. Yeah? Well, you know how tough it is to get babysitters. It's tough to get, it's tough to get the kind I like, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you don't want to face the group here, huh? <laughs> He's a good horse. It's seat. funny he faced the group when Wayne Newton was riding him. Well, he thinks I'm his brother Fig. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, tell me about yourself. No, really, Dean. Uh, right, right. <laughs> That's the way he likes to work. <laughs> what track is he running at tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> But he's got to lose. <laughs> <laughs> now, really, a ranch is a great place to raise kids. You know, you'd be very happy in a place like the Ponderosa. Yeah? Well, you could have some cattle, a few horses, you know. Oh, well, I love horses. As a matter of fact, I, I keep a little pint in the... St That's Pinto. Pinto, not a pint. Pinto in the stable. Hey, Lauren, you seem to have such a great time on, on your show. I was just wondering, do you think I could be on Bonanza, you know? Huh? Dean, that... What a wonderful idea that is. You'd, you'd be a great guest star. Really. I don't want to be a guest star. I want to be a son. <laughs> you want to be a son? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Dean. Uh, what? I don't think we have room for a singing son. Are you kidding? Can you... <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> Are you kidding, Lord? I'll be right with you. All right. Are you All kidding? Right. Can you just imagine? You know, you come home from a hard day, you know, off the range, and there I am waiting, and instead of just saying, Howdy, Pa, I sing to you. You know, I sing... How oh, I love the dear silver that shines in your hair. Oh, bless the dear daddy. <laughs> I just disowned you as a son, Dean. <laughs> The land under starry skies above I don't fence me in Now let me ride through the wide open country that I love I don't fence me in Now let me be by myself in the evening breeze I listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees Send me off forever when I ask you please Don't fence me in Can we fence these in? I think so there's little Joe, and there's Puss, and they know who's the boss in this land where men are men. He's seen this act. Where seldom is heard discouraging word if Bonanza stays in the top ten. <laughs> oh, bury me not. 
on the low ferry. He loves you, Dick. Let me roll along. Yes, sir. Singing on TV. Can you imagine how on the tea we'd be? <laughs> we could sing our hearts, hearts out. out. He loves you. I think he bit me. <laughs> As a West End to some we just can't fail And the record counters on the county trail We'll be twice as famous as Roy and Dave I'm Roy, yeah! Yippee, <laughs> yippee, 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 With an old guitar and a mandolin <laughs> With the life and sin Keep those cards and colors a-coming in Hey, here's a couple of shady characters who just robbed a bank and ran out of gas. Their luck ain't about to improve either, because they're going to find out you can get just about anything in a modern gas station, except what you came in for. Yeah, I'm glad you stopped pushing. Yeah, all right, good. I'll tell you what we do. We get some gas, we get out of here before the cops catch us. Move over. I'll move over. Where's the guy? Hey, guy, where are you? Little service here, let's go. Welcome to the Jiffy service station. Finest gas station in the West. Well, you know our slogan. No matter how far you travel on, you'll never find a cleaner John. <laughs> Very good. Who wrote that? Henry Wadsworth, Texaco. <laughs> Listen, Mac, look, we're in a bit of a hurry. Could you fill it up with... Yes, sir, sir we believe in friendly service. I always like to get on a first-name basis with my customers. Uh, what's your name? Clyde. Clyde? What a coincidence. Mine's Bonnie. <laughs> Hey, you, Bonnie, is there any fuzz around here? Only on chilly evenings when I wear a mangora sweater. <laughs> I'll just check under the hood. <laughs> What's he doing now? Uh, you got a loose doohickey here. I hope he can't reach inside the car from there. <laughs> you found your trouble. You're out of gas. Ah! All right, that does it. <laughs> now listen, we gotta make it to the state line, you understand? I want you to get us some gas and get it fast. And I'll tell you one thing, you're not gonna make it without gas. <laughs> in case you're interested, there's a lot of bullet holes in your, in your car here. <laughs> By the way, we, uh, we specialize in body work. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you a secret. So do we. <laughs> Keep it oiled and we'll get many trigger-happy hours out of it. Hey, bright boy. Come here. Listen to me now. I'm going to tell you something. If we don't get gas in this car right now, I'm going to take a pipe. I'll beat your brains right into your neck. You understand what I'm telling you? Now, get me gas fast. You know, you're terribly attractive when you're angry. <laughs> Please, would you have a heart? Let me explain. We just robbed a bank. The cops are after us. If they catch us, I do 20 years. Now, I'm a family man. I got seven kids. I'm putting them through reform school. Look, friend, I'd like to help you out, but I'm only here to sell gas. It's company policy. We gotta give you something. Okay, we'll take the trading stamps. Right, $1,000 worth of trading stamps. letters asking whether the lady who plays Ken Lane's mother on our show really is his mother. Well, to be perfectly honest, she's not. She's really his uncle. <laughs> but kidding aside, her name is Kay Medford. She's a wonderful lady and truly a fine actress. We'd like to feature her now with my good friend Zero Mostel in a number that Zero introduced in his Broadway smash Fiddler on the Roof. It's about two people who've been married a long time and finally get around to asking each other a very important question. Goldie, mm. I've decided to give permission to marry for our daughter, Huddle. 
What? But he's poor. He's got nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's a good man, Goldie. I like him. What's more, Huddle likes him. She loves him. So what more can we do? It's a new world. A new world. Goldie. Do you love me? Do I what? <laughs> Do you love me? Do I love you? Well? With our daughters getting married, all the trouble in the town, you're upset, you're worn out, go inside, go lie down, maybe it's indigestion. Goldie, I'm asking you a question. What is it? Do you love me? You're a fool, you know that. I know. But do you love me? Do I love you? Tell me. For 25 years I've washed you cooked your meals, cleaned your house, given your children, milked the cow. After 25 years, let's not talk about love right now. Goldie, what the first it? time I met you was on our wedding day. I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous. So was I. But my father and my mother said we'd learn to love each other. And now I'm asking, Goldie, what do you love me? I'm your wife. I know. <laughs> but do you love me? Do I love him? Let me hear the answer. For 25 years I've lived with him. Starved with him. Twenty-five years, my bed is his. If that's not love, what is? Then you love me. I suppose I do. And I suppose I love you too. It doesn't change a thing, but even so, after 25 years, it's nice to 